so it's effectively just lengthening the shaft. Right guys, welcome back to Scratch Golf. Thanks for all your kind comments on the last video. The last video took me ages to edit, um, and I'm sure it was a bit longer than most people would have wanted, so I'm gonna try and get everything I wanna say done in two holes today. So it'll be quicker for me to put together, which leaves more time to practice, which is good. Uh, and it won't take as long to watch, so there'll be less of this awkward talking going on, which is happening now. I'm still talking, you're still watching it. Thank you for doing that, but I'm gonna stop now. I always thought that for me to play a round of level par golf, it would need to be some kind of magical day where the stars aligned and I woke up with a swing that felt like Rory McIlroy's and a short game that made Seve look like a hacker and a putting stroke that was more repetitive than Jeremy Clarkson's jokes. I thought I'd have to hit every shot perfectly and stiff every chip that I hit and hole every putt that I looked at. But I've realised that's not the case. If you watched last week's video, you'll know that I just shot my best ever round of golf, which was a two over 72. Well, the day after that video went out, I went out and played and I shot 72 again. And the day after that, I shot 71. It's obviously my best ever round. So obviously I still haven't shot level par, but I'm getting closer. And those recent rounds have taught me something. And that's that I don't need to play amazing golf in order to shoot level par. In all of those rounds last week, I made some double bogeys, I hit some bad shots, I didn't get up and down a few times and I really should have done. I missed some really short putts, I had lip outs, all the kind of things that you would say normally would contribute to a bad round of golf. And I didn't hit many shots that I would class as particularly fantastic. And yet I was really close to shooting level par. So obviously it's frustrating for me that without those silly mistakes, I could have shot level par or even under par for the first time in my life. But at the same time, it's quite encouraging that I've realized I don't need to play amazing golf in order to shoot level par. Whenever I've played with people who've put good scores together, the thing that surprised me the most is actually how unimpressive it's been to watch. That might sound silly, but I just find that people who shoot level par or thereabouts, I never tend to watch them and think, oh wow, like he's hitting a 360 yard drive or, you know, he's Dustin Johnson hitting his six iron 230 yards through the air. They just seem to keep it in play, don't hit any really bad shots, get up and down quite a few times when they miss the green and hold a few birdie putts. Well, sounds simple really, doesn't it? I think whatever level you're at, whether you're trying to get to scratch or get on the European tour or just to break 100 for the first time, I think that your score will normally be determined by your worst shots a lot more than your best shots. So if you hit a great drive, that might feel really good and it might impress your mates, but at best, that's just gonna give you the chance to hit a decent approach shot to give you the chance of making a birdie. If you hit a really good approach shot, at best, that's gonna give you, you know, maybe a good chance of making a birdie. So even if you make that birdie, you've only really gained one shot. On the other hand, if you hit a really bad drive, that can immediately cost you two shots. Or if you're standing over a chip where you think, well, I really should get up and down here, and instead you blade it across the green and leave yourself in a horrible position in the bunker, and it takes you another three to get down, that straight away cost you two, three, maybe four shots. So the key to scoring well isn't hitting more of those fantastic shots that really feel good and the ones that you remember when you go to bed that night. It's eliminating the really bad ones that stick in your mind for all the wrong reasons. Nice. And for me, pitching used to be the weakest part of my game. It used to be the thing that would end up costing me shots. I lost count of the amount of times where I'd hit a great drive and be in a fantastic position, just, you know, 60 yards to get up and down for a birdie, and I'd walk off with a bogey, a double bogey, or worse. So here's a drill that really helped me fix my pitching. So pitching used to be the weakest part of my game. 
I could hit a few decent pitches, but I could just as easily chunk one nowhere or blade it miles across the green. Obviously that was costing me quite a few shots. So there's a lad who practices here at Burley Park who's on the Euro Pro Tour, uh, and he gave me this drill that he does, and it made a massive difference to my game. So what you do is just grab an alignment stick and run it alongside the grip of your club. Just hold it normally, like that. So it's effectively just lengthening the shaft. Just hold it so that at address, the stick is just kind of resting against your left hand side. And what you want to do is when you make your swing, just avoid the stick hitting you on the left hand side. You can hit balls like this, but first just get used to the feeling. You might find that the first few times you do it, the stick really clips into your left hand side. If you hit pitches by flipping your hand, the stick will hit you straight away. It's really digging into my side there. What you'll find is that you'll finish facing the target with your chest facing the target, which if you watch any good player, any tour pro pitching, that's how they finish. What you'll find is a lot of amateurs, particularly those who struggle with pitching, who try to flip it with their hands, the body's not turning, so it'll still be facing the same direction it was at address, and the stick will hit them. It's given me a much shallower angle of attack, so I'm much less likely to either hit it fat or blade it across the green. Now obviously when I give you these drills, remember that I'm not a professional. If I was, then this journey to scratch would be quite a short one that wouldn't make a lot of sense. But these are things that have worked for me and continue to work for me. So if you struggle with pitching, give it a try. If it works for you, then great. If not, then don't worry about it. Thanks for watching that video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. It's a lawnmower. Why is walking and talking so hard?